All right. One of the things I identified last time around working with this steel roofing that was a huge pain was long straight cuts with the tin snips. My first and last panels on the roof are half panels, which means I needed to get straight cut full 14 feet of a panel. And the steel doesn't flex out of the way like paper does when you're cutting it with scissors. And I ended up having to cut a half inch strip out and do two parallel cuts and back and forth with the right and left handed snips. Anyway, it was a pain. And so the solution for that this time around, circular saw. This is a trick that's been on YouTube for years. You take an old, crappy, worn out blade and a circular saw and you put it on backwards and it'll cut steel. And so that is the plan. And I really quickly whipped up this wooden base plate. It is seven and a half inches from the blade to this straight edge. And that is the cut I need to make. I'm gonna rip seven and a half inches from the seam, full length of this panel. Well, that worked brilliantly. We're about an hour job into two minutes. Dead straight, really easy to keep indexed with that long edge. You saw me reset after I got a little ways into it. It was cutting okay, but the backwards blade was getting hung up on the, the wood. This is a cutting table. I don't care if I cut into it, but it was just burning because the blade was backwards. It wasn't clearing chips. And also unlike wood, the steel minimum tooth engagement does not work very well. So I elevated it on some one buys here, got some clearance under it, and I could go deeper with the blade, and then it cut nice. So, yeah, YouTube is right on this one. I recommend it. it works great. See if this thing really works.
All right, first half panel's done, that's the tricky bit. Now I'm gonna prep all the remaining full panels here on the ground before I start working on the roof, just to get it out of the way. They're pretty straightforward, they almost go up complete. I notch each corner to create a fin down here on the bottom that I can bend back and over into a hem that clips over the free edge of the eave. And then I drill an oversized hole every two feet for screws and it's oversized so that these can expand and contract in the sun. Yeah, I got 17 of these to do, so let's get to it. That's it, I just do that 16 more times, and the panels will all be prepped. Man, time lapses make everything easier. A couple seconds of video, some cheery music, hours of work, done like that. All right, first piece of steel is up. Exciting. I didn't uh, film cutting that because it would have been a lot of tool fetching and head scratching and I don't know, it just didn't seem that interesting to me. The next piece is the east rake. This was the piece that was there. This end got smashed up by the tree and at the time I just cut it off, taped it down and left it. I just took it down. The nice thing is that this end is a template for what I need to do on the new piece. So what's going on here is this is called a telescopic joint. There's another piece of profile exactly like this up there. And this little kick out flange is trimmed back so that it can slot into the one that's there. There's a little hem here. And then these are the holes from the rivets that held it together. And then this is the amount of overlap. I marked it up there so I could see. And this fold here gets crimped tight so that it's as small as possible and it can fit inside the one that's there. And the one that's there got worried open a little bit so that these telescope together. And the slope is this way, so when any water gets on this, it runs down. The other piece is on top and outside of this, and it shingles to the outside of the roof system. I don't really like to use abrasives to cut this stuff. I feel like the heat's bad for the coatings, but I don't know, I've tried some different stuff and cutting right along 180 degree hem, I just, I can't figure out a way to do it that gives me better results than just grinding the fold out and peeling it back. And you can pretty clearly see 
I did this one with snips. I first got a screwdriver in there to, to worry it open, and that's what all these gouges are about. And then I tried to snip right along the fold, but it has this shark tooth mess. It just came out ugly. That one's clean and tidy. And you know, the paint didn't blister back. Maybe it's fine. That goes together pretty nice. Got one fastener in up there. The telescopic joint is where I want it. So now I get this all lined up and I can trace where this corner is. And then I'll trim it back about a quarter inch back of there. Does that make sense? Because if this is a quarter inch back, you'll see gray. If this is a quarter inch back, you'll see Eve. Yeah. Oh, and I also need this. And that's it. Pull this down, make this cut, which is gonna come straight across here, 45 back to join up with this line, and then held back on these two. And then we bang it up there and put screws in, and this whole corner will be done. All right, corner's done. Come have a tour. I'm pretty pleased with that. So the reason, I don't know what to call this, this kick out, this, this hem is so much shorter on the eave than the rake is so that I have room for gutters here. Originally, when I first put this roof together, I had extended, these are called extended eaves. On, on the rake here, and they were this size. And then on the eaves, I had gutters integrated into the roof system. They attached to the roof deck, and they were sheet metal like the rest of the roof. And then the standing seam panels went over top of them. I really didn't like how they went together. They were finicky, they never really worked well. In fact, I'm gonna tear them off the other side someday and do a completely separate gutter system that just attaches the fascia here under this drip edge. So I think this is a better solution doing a extended eave profile on the eave as well as the rake and then the panels hem over all three sides and this corner looks a little funky but i think it'll be just fine once there's a gutter here all right this is the extended eave that's going to go on the other corner and essentially what i want to have happen is this have a straight fold flap that goes back along the rake and then the top flange here, I want to come out far enough to hem into the rake piece and then this wind-driven rain barrier here gets cut back to allow that to tie in, if that makes any sense. The profile it'll mate with is six inches, which means I'm gonna take this hem back six and a quarter. Hem this this right here is inch and a half. So we want this to stick out a little bit less than that because we don't want it to bottom out and prevent that from seating on the wall. So this gets cut back an inch and call it seven sixteenths. All right, so this goes right on the corner. And then the idea is that the mating part, this one's sort of the wrong end, you can still see, slides together like that. 
And yeah, I'm going to trim this just a hair. The last one of these, so this is the part that's a little bit tricky. There's three of these along that edge and the corners, of course, have to butt up against the corners and the middle piece has to have joints that work with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do any cutting on the far end of this piece yet. I'm going to install it, put one screw in, measure between the two, and then I'll know how far back I have to cut my telescoping joints to make it all work. And then I can assemble the last two pieces all at once. Now that the left one is located and I've measured to the right one, I know how far I have to cut back for this joint and I know how far I have to cut the mating piece for both joints. So I can take this off, go back down, do all three of those cuts and then come up and install the entire eave. Checked and tuned up the fit on the middle piece, made sure it was gonna go. And now I'm gonna put some uh, roof sealant on these. So these are one of the few places in the roof system where if any, I mean, no water should ever get here, but if it did, it could travel laterally and find its way through a seam. And so you just do vertical stripes, continuous beads of sealant down these lapped areas of the telescoping joint and that should stop that. Maybe worth noting that I think that uh, you're supposed to have six inch joints with two beads of sealant. And I have three foot joints with four beads of sealant because, I don't know, more is better, right? Eve is done. I think the West Rake is going to have to wait for daylight. All right, so I fitted and cut the last piece of rake here that's gonna go in. This is the old bit that survived the tree strike. It's got a dent here, but that's fine. The telescoping joint is working, the end is trimmed. One thing I wanna show you that I didn't capture last time is the cleat. So this is called a cleat. It's just a flat piece of sheet metal with a 45 degree, maybe half inch little kick out on it. And the idea behind that is to allow this system to go together with no exposed fasteners. Exposed fasteners are leak opportunities. We don't want that. And so this profile lays flat on top of the roof, overhangs, goes back, runs down the rake, then comes out just like this cleat does, and then wraps around in a 180 degree hem and goes back up. And so the idea is when you're installing this, you peel this out and hook it on that cleat and then screw it in the top and then the roof deck covers the top fasteners. And so this edge is supported by the screws that are holding the cleat. The cleat is screwed to the rake. This hooks under that, 
and then screws on top. And so there's no holes at all in the side here where water can get. There's only holes up and under in the cleat, which water would have to come down, go around here, and then go back up to get to. Water doesn't like to go up. These are tricky to get hooked all the way. I'm sure with the camera on, it's gonna be the worst one I've ever done. But we're gonna do it anyway, we're gonna try. And of course, this route for the trailer is super in the way. Save the worst one for last. Okay, so those two are telescoped together. They're not hooked on the cleat at all. And this um, homemade man lift excavator thing is working great, but the one downside is I have no controls up here. And I'm too low, so I have to climb down, turn on the machine, raise this up a foot, and then climb back up. Okay, well that took long enough. You probably got to enjoy a time lapse of me struggling, but from all the way from the peak down to about there, it's hemmed up properly. Hopefully I can reach that from the other end and get it to carry on. Oh, just got another foot, okay. is looking really good. It's clipped over the cleat, screwed under the roof deck. The last thing to do is at the telescoping joint where the two pieces come together, where the hem out here nests, where the tab on the inside piece goes into the hem on the outside piece, there's a pop rivet needs to go in there. These pop rivets are the only exposed fasteners on this roof when all is said and done, and they're all strategically placed like this one, where if it leaks, nothing happens. It goes through these three layers of steel and the back side of it is still on the outside of my solvent welded plastic fascia. So if that water gets on that and it leaks and it goes through, it doesn't get anywhere water couldn't get otherwise. So that doesn't compromise the integrity of the roof system. Yeah, I'm gonna use my homemade rivet clamp here. These never quite want to nest as well as I want them to. But do our best to get this seated and then I'm going to put a rivet. I'm probably going to put a rivet right where the old one was here just to fill this hole and then I'll probably put another one next to it into sound new material just belt and suspenders it. Throw a piece of scrap of steel in there so that when my drill punches through I don't go into the fascia. go. These never nest quite as tight as I want them to, but I, I reckon that's just par for the course. And that is it. This rake is done. I gotta go do the same thing on the other side. Don't have access for the excavator over there, so I gotta do it hanging over the edge of the roof, which is a lot less fun and definitely a lot less fun to film, so you're not gonna get to see it, but rest assured it looks like this, but the other way around. Are you excited? It's panel day. Things are finally going to start happening quickly.
right, all the full panels are on. Now it's just this last half panel here. What I've done is I haven't hemmed the edge or notched it or anything yet. I've just set it in place here. This is the remnant that I cut off the half panel that I started the whole course with. And this was all planned out, so it's whatever. It overhangs about two inches, two and a half inches, a little bit more than I need it to. So I'm now gonna take a pen and trace how much, you know, where the overhang is. So then I can take this off and take it down and fold it on that line and then do all the notching and hemming. And then this will snap over the rib here and hem over the free end there. And the only fasteners in this piece of roofing will be at the very top under the ridge cap. But since it's hemmed over on both sides, on all three sides, you can't go anywhere. So let's get this, get this line transferred and then we can fab the last piece. Cut it and fold it. All right, so I took my trace line and I shifted it over an inch and a quarter because I'm gonna bend a one inch hem on it. A quarter inch just gives me some room for error. And this one is not parallel, so I'm gonna cut it like the other one, but freehand. Way through that cut, that dramatically changed. So the uh, YouTube trick cutting sheet metal with a circular saw does work, but doesn't last long. First about third of that, I was cutting the little kerf, the extra kerf width of the carbide tips were snipping the steel and bringing out ribbons of it. And it was cutting pretty nice and there wasn't a ton of heat. And there's a burr, but it's not terrible. And then the kerf got smaller heat got worse and the burr got a lot worse and I sort of suspected and I look at this and see I have knocked you see that probably not I have knocked every single carbide insert off of this blade so for the last portion of that cut this was just the sheet metal blade body with no teeth on it gumming through the softer steel of the roof, which to be fair, did work. It gave me surprisingly good results considering my idea of you keep your old blades and then use them backwards and gum through steel. <laughs> Pretty limited usefulness. But got the job done. I'm gonna tidy up this cut and then get to folding. Cool roller bender thing again. It's still working great, but I think. If I'm gonna use this anymore, I should make a metal plate to go on the top here. The rough field cut edges are kind of sawing into the wood here, but I made it knowing I needed two bends out of it and two bends I got. Last piece is made. God willing it fits. bend can only be bent to 90 degrees on the ground otherwise the panel won't go in and then you can just hand bend it most of the way 
it's 180. And then what I'm gonna come back and do is all along the eave and up this rake, and I already did the previous rake, is take two soft-faced hammers, a heavier one braced underneath and a lighter one on top to pinch this seam tight. Right now we're just getting it in place. About that that's okay okay back to hammering oh, yeah tightens that seam up beautifully all right that edge is all nice and tidy now I'm gonna do the same hammer thing all along this edge. Fortunately for this one, I get to uh, sit down in a nice ergonomic position. Last thing before the panels are done are these closeout flaps. So when I notched and prepped the panels, I left this face of the female side of the, of the standing seam rib wide. I left a tab on it, folded it over and rough cut it, left a bunch extra on it. And the idea is this is not really necessary for weatherproofing, but you know, bees and stuff, bugs can climb up these ribs and make their homes there. And that's kind of a hassle. So these, flaps just flap closed over the top and take a seamer here and make sure that that rib is nicely engaged this one is fighting me ends of them get a little bit twisted up when you're cutting them so get that back into shape and I take a hammer tap that nice and tight over the end of the panel Take some snips, trim flush, trim the top flush, knit corners, and reseat it. And you know, sitting here, it doesn't look amazing and sort of twisted up or whatever from the ground that looks perfect. And people don't really get that close to your roof as a general rule. So I'm gonna go down the line, tidy all these up and then the panels will be done. And then the last thing I have to do is the ridge. So what I've just done is install these Z closures. Nowhere to put a camera and my hands are full, so you get to watch it from afar. But these are just Z-shaped steel profiles with butyl tape underneath and four screws each. And they do two things. One, they give me somewhere to attach the next layer. And two, they stop wind-driven rain. So if this panel is wet and the wind is blowing hard this way, it can actually drive water uphill and into the ridge vent. And so these being taped down, stop that. So next I'm going to come back and I'm going to apply sealant up the vertical legs for the same reason to make this a, a good seal for that wind-driven rain. And then some perforated profile here that rivets down and then the ridge cap rivets to this and that allows airflow to ventilate the attic space even though I don't really have an attic I have a, 
a cold roof setup that, that needs ventilation. And the fact that the Z profile has a downward facing edge and this has a downward facing edge means that again, the rivets don't need to be watertight. Those holes can leak and any water that drips through the hole will fall onto the outside of the roof system and run down harmlessly. So those are the next couple of steps. Let's get to work. Whew. Forgot how long it took to pop that many rivets. Well, that's it. The ridge is done. The roof is done. Bring on the rain. <laughs> 